We'd like to remind our listeners that our program is available on our podcast. Use your favorite podcast app and go to the App Store and look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. And we'd appreciate if you'd subscribe. Chris Cagini with the Stark County Health Department. Good morning, Pam. Everyone needs to stay at home, wear their masks. If they have to go out, wash their hands frequently throughout the day. Keep that social distance. And you just have to say no to gathering. Everybody is on the front line in this fight now. Mask up, walk up, and back up. The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're glad you joined us this morning. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Studio Arts and Glass, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital, and of course our socially distant technical, technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. Today, Brad and I are broadcasting from our administrative offices, and our very special guest is Effie Berenstein. Did I get it right, Doc? Yep, sure did. <laughs> okay. Director of Physical Therapy with Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital, North Canton location. Morning, Effie, and welcome to the show. Morning. Thank you for having me. I, I wish I was the director, but I'm just a doctor of physical therapy. Oh, uh, what did I say? I think director, but that's okay. <laughs> Beg your pardon. You got okay. a promotion today. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does it feel like you're spinning or the room is moving around you? That's a classic sign, a particular type of dizziness called vertigo. And it's more than a feeling of off-kilter, and it usually gets worse when you move your head. 90 million Americans go to health providers because of vertigo, dizziness, or balance problems. It is the second most common complaint heard in doctor's offices and will occur 70% of the nation's population at some point in their lives. This morning, we're going to talk about dizziness and vertigo with Yevgeny and how physical therapy can help. We'd like to remind our listeners today that our program can be found on our podcast. Just pick your favorite podcast app and please look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and you can subscribe to any of our programs. All right, doctor. So welcome to the show. How about you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, introduce yourself to our listeners? Sure. Uh, thanks very much for having me. It's pretty cool being here. Um, well, I'm a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Kishinev, Moldova, which is a small country in Eastern Europe. Mm. Uh, I moved to the U.S. in 91 from the former Soviet Union, which collapsed about three months after I left because clearly they couldn't hold up without me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, moved to New York City with my folks, lived there until PT school. Uh, I went to Brooklyn College for my bachelor's in exercise science. Um, then I moved to Ohio and went to Walsh, uh, where I got my doctoral degree in physical therapy. And I've been with Mercy or Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital now, uh, since May, 2018. Um, what else? I've got an amazing wife and two kiddos and one on the way. Hmm, interesting. Congratulations. So, so the, name you, the name of the country you came from again? Moldova. Moldova. Yeah, I've heard of that. Where, where is it? It's it's right between Ukraine and Romania. Uh, it's got a okay. population of like thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> thirteen people or thirteen thousand? Yeah, no, this is after I left. <laughs> I see. Okay. All right. So, what are your responsibilities at Mercy Physical Therapy, and what services are offered there? So, um, my my responsibilities personally, uh, I'm I evaluate and treat patients with all types of neuromusculoskeletal conditions. Um, I also, I'm a, I'm also a clinical instructor for students who are going through their doctoral programs in physical therapy. Uh, I, I also do some marketing as well for, for Mercy, just going to different practitioners offices, uh, promoting our services. Um, with regards to what services are offered, we've got, we've got a ton. There's, um, we treat, you know, post-operative and orthopedic injuries, uh, like motor vehicle accidents, work injuries, sports injuries. Um, we have neurological rehabilitation, aquatic therapy, dry needling, um, <sighs> pediatric rehab. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that we do here. Uh, we also have, in the North Canton location specifically, we have um, occupational therapy as well with driver's assessments and hand therapy, 
uh, we have speech language pathology, um, we've got a fitness center, and la- last but not least, we obviously treat vestibular imbalance uh, patients who are dizzy. Tell, tell us, uh, Doctor, tell us a little bit about Vertigo. You know, there was a movie called Vertigo, and I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um, I may, I may have a million. With a couple of famous actors or actresses, I can't remember who was in it, but I've seen it a couple times. So anyway, I'm, go ahead. So ver, Vertigo is really all it is, is it's a symptom. It's a symptom of whirling or spinning, a sensation of whirling or spinning while your body isn't actually moving. That's essentially what what vertigo is. Hey, can it can it come upon you any time? Like, okay, you're sitting in a chair, uh, you've been cross your legs for a long time. You get up and you're buzzing around. So sometimes it depends on what's what's really causing it, um, but it it could theoretically, yeah, it could happen to anyone. Um, usually, usually it happens to people who are more seasoned in life. Um, obviously, the, the more seasoned, the higher the prevalence of, of specifically of uh, BPPV, which is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, um, which is what is technically called, crystal, not technically, but referred to as crystal loose uh, in the ear. Uh, but really, anyone can get it. You can get it at any time. So... Is there a portion of our population that are predisposed to vertigo, or can anyone get it? Yeah, uh, anyone anyone can pretty much get it. But again, the, the further along you are in years, the more likely you are to to get it. I, I had it. I had it when I was like twelve, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure it was because of an ear infection. But all I remember was was uh, having a paper with exercises that made me incredibly dizzy that I didn't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Does exercises help? <laughs> they well, I I don't remember. I think it just at that time I think it just went away. But then again, I was twelve and dizzy, so yeah, sure. I don't know how reliable my account is. <laughs> okay. All right, so you mentioned crystals. So what does it mean when someone has crystals loose in their ear? So in the inner ear, we've got a we've got a vestibular system that's right next to your um, hearing organ called your cochlea. But the vestibular system consists of three canals, and you have one on each side. There's three canals, and at the end of each of those canals, there's a little feather-like structure called the cupola. And there are also two other small organs that uh, are called maculae. And those, those two organs, they've got this, like, uh, glue jelly substance that has calcium crystals uh, attached to the surface. Now, the the purpose of of this whole uh, system is to tell our body where we are in space. It's one of the systems that tells our body where we are in space. Um, And it's filled with with a fluid called endolymph. And when we move our heads, that fluid moves, and those structures, those cupolae at the end of the canals, are pushed by that fluid, and that kind of tells us uh, which direction we moved. So those other two structures, uh, the maculae, they've got these crystals on them, and the crystals function um, as weights so that when there's linear acceleration, there's the, the crystals are pulled, and that sends a message to the brain that that we've just moved. So sometimes those crystals can misbehave and, and fall off into one of those canals that I that I mentioned, and then it wreaks havoc. Huh. Can I draw an analogy, and you can tell me if I'm right? Sure. So I'm thinking about my kid playing a video game with a controller, and he's driving a car. And when the when he moves the controller to like a steering wheel. It's not unlike what the gimbals do or the sensors do in the remote, sensing the direction that you're moving. Yeah. Am I kind of close? Is that what our heads are doing biologically, not just digitally on your remote? It, yeah, I mean, pretty much. That's not a that's not a bad uh, comparison. Um, yes, the, there there are tilt sensors, so that's that's essentially what those uh, 
cuvillet are. Okay. They measure the accelerate the angular acceleration of our head. Huh. Okay. All right. So when a patient's diagnosed with vertigo, is the common course of me- treatment medication or physical therapy, or is there a combination? So that, again, that depends on what type of quote-unquote vertigo uh, or dizziness it is. Um, what I was just talking about is uh, BPPV or benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, but uh, there, there are various forms of dizziness or, or um, unsteadiness that can be caused by other things. So it really, um, vertigo is really often used as a blanket symptom for other types of dizziness. People can say uh, they've got lightheadedness or wooziness or swaying, feeling fuzzy. Um, so uh, it depends, like I said. So for BPPV specifically, uh, physical therapy is the go-to treatment because there's uh, there are repositioning maneuvers that can be done to um, put those crystals back into place. If you think about, you know, like one of those uh, square mazes with the little metal balls that are rolling around in it, it's kind of the, the repositioning maneuver kind of does that, but with your head um, to reposition the crystals right back where they belong. Um, so uh, that's the BPPV is treated by physical therapy very successfully. And things like medication, like um, vestibular suppressants or like meclizine are not indicated. Um, on the other hand, sometimes dizziness can be caused by uh, hypo function. So meaning one of the nerves um, on one side or on both sides are not firing properly. And usually that, that can occur as a result of either a sinus infection or allergies or something along those lines, something viral. And in those cases, uh, prednisone has been shown to uh, to have good effects. Um, initially, in the first uh, day or so, vestibular suppressants like like meclizine are okay, um, but prolonged use is also not a good idea in that case. Mm. Uh, and physical therapy after that to kind of finish off the job uh, and um, fix it with exercise. So it, it really just depends on the type of, of dizziness for whether you're treating it with medication, PT, or a combo. How big are these crystals? They're microscopic. Okay, so microns or even smaller? Um, microns, I'm sure, but don't quote me on that. Huh. I'm pretty sure. It's huh. amazing. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, I mean, the, the, uh, the history behind these, these invisible crystals, they've got... It's it's a very very recent finding. Um, it was it, BPPV as a um, as a disorder, I guess, was first described by a, a Vietnamese physician in like 1921, I think. Um, but no cause or treatment was found for for decades. What they used to do that they actually used to go in and surgically destroy the vestibular cochlear nerve, that nerve that feeds that. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, system, they would destroy that nerve so that people would stop being dizzy. Um, hmm. And over time, uh, people started realizing that movement affects this uh, the, the, these bouts of dizziness. And um, there was a there was an ear uh, surgeon by the name of uh, Dr. John Epley who really pushed for the idea that there are these microscopic crystals that are falling out of place. And he was he was laughed at, and um, really not looked upon favorably by the medical community. And it wasn't until I think 1992 that he published a study where the, a journal finally published his his findings. Um, but even then, in in 96, his his uh, the Oregon Board of Medical Examiners, which is where he was from. Um, informed him that he was under investigation for misconduct for his maneuvers. So they, they really thought he was a kook. Uh, and it wasn't until the early 2000s that this actually became the, excuse me, the go-to uh, maneuver to reposition 
these crystals. Okay. We've got to take a break here, Doctor. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X dot com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. From 1976 to the new year, 2020, we've been part of the Canton community. This year, we celebrate 44 years of service. Thank you for your business and continued support of the Medicine Center Pharmacies. A lot has changed in the pharmacy world over the past 44 years, but one thing hasn't, our commitment to your health. Stop by your local Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital wants you to know we are here for you literally and virtually. For our patient's safety, Mercy is providing virtual doctor appointments from the comfort of your home. This service is available for stat care urgent care seven days a week and Mercy primary care Monday through Friday. See our website at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth for office and appointment hours. Mercy telehealth visits are simple, convenient, and can be utilized by anyone who has access to a smartphone, tablet, or computer. Our Mercy representatives are ready and happy to assist you. So whether you are in need of urgent care for minor illnesses and injuries or would like a one-on-one with a Mercy primary care physician, Mercy is here for you. Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital telehealth appointments. Learn more at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. That's cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. Online appointments are considered medical services and will be billed to your insurance. Copays and deductibles apply. Saving money is awesome. Saving money on items you actually use? Fantastic. Hi, Paul White for the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville. If you think you'll find the same low prices, huge variety, or great customer service at any other store, you'd be wrong. Stop into our store in Louisville and see what great deals we have. Follow us on our Facebook page at Half Off Store to see super specials. Why pay full price? Come in and experience the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Yes, we are open. We are open. The Medicine Center Pharmacies and the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville are open. Some great services are still in play. Our drive through windows, curb service, and our enhanced delivery service. Our stores are fully inventoried and fully staffed for your convenience. 13 pharmacists to help you with your medications and over-the-counter products. So don't hesitate to visit us or use one of our services. Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, New Philadelphia, and Minerva. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. Welcome back to Health Matters at the medicine, with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brad and I are discussing dizziness and vertigo with Dr. Effie Berenstein from Mercy. Got to get used to this Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital Physical Therapy. All right, Doctor, before the break, you were uh, talking about how a revolutionary idea from a physician was kind of mocked and now is mainstream. And it's interesting how that happens a lot. And I've been Mm. thinking about some different things we do in the pharmacy that maybe were therapies that were not exactly embraced in the beginning. But not to digress, um, I... Having you on on video is great because sometimes that helps give people an image of something that they can't hear over the radio. But can you describe for us what it might be like for a patient to do some of these exercises in physical therapy? I envision maybe the patient not just sitting upright and moving their head, but maybe laying down or or doing some different levels. Am I picturing the right kind of scenarios or am I off base? No, you're you're definitely you're definitely on the mark. Uh, depending on so, let's say it is um, BPPV. The the treatment for it is uh, you you lie the patient down and you move their head. Excuse me, you move their head uh, in the direction depending on um, where that debris is. And the way that we tell that is by uh, something called nystagmus, which is involuntary eye movement. Um, Mm. so we have a saying, we have a saying, the eyes don't lie. So, um, Mm. some some places have, uh, these video infrared goggles 
that it, they you can see the patient's eye, but the patients can't see anything, so they can't really fixate their eyes on anything. And with all these different positions, you're determining where those crystals are and then repositioning them mm-hmm. accordingly. Um, but the exam, uh, first the patient's seated, just consists of a, a very, very thorough subjective history. Um, and then we kind of go from there depending on uh, what they're telling me. I just think it's interesting that there's a nice non-drug way to help a patient through this and you don't have to worry about drowsiness or impairment or interactions with other medications and things like that. So I think that's pretty neat. So, yeah. but, um, okay. Um, we mentioned, you mentioned some drugs that can be used to treat, um, vertigo. You mentioned meclizine and maybe prednisone in an extreme case. How about medications that can cause vertigo in patients? So that's, uh, that's a great question because I think a lot of times that might be overlooked. Um, but there are a wide range of medications that have dizziness and vertigo as as their side effects. Um, so, for instance, antiepileptics, which are taken for seizures, like uh, lamotrigine, um, carbamazepine, and clonazepam, would, would all uh, have dizziness as a side effect. Blood pressure medications like amlodipine, um, hydrochlorothiazide, which is uh, a water pill. Uh, there are some antidepressants like uh, mirtazapine and sertraline that can cause dizziness. And even um, some antibiotics are, are what's called ototoxics. So they are, they destroy um, the uh, inner ear. Auditory nerve, yeah. Yeah, like, like amoxicillin, gentamicin. Those would, uh, those would all potentially cause uh, vertigo. So that's something that we uh, need to keep in mind when we're evaluating a patient. Any other causes of vertigo um, or dizziness beyond what we've mentioned so far between age and drugs? And yeah, I, I mean, there's a there's a wide range of things that can cause it, uh, for, ranging from the more serious, like a, a brain stem or a midbrain stroke, um, concussion can cause that, uh, orthostatic hypotension, which is uh, a drop in blood pressure with a uh, change in position. That's something that I very frequently find actually uh, patients when they come in and tell me that they're, they feel lightheaded when they get up from, from a chair. Mm-hmm. Um, migraines can cause it. Uh, alcohol intake, alcohol intake can cause vertigo because the, the alcohol actually creeps into the, uh, into the inner ear fluid and, and causes an imbalance. Mm. I guess, we can see that, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and many heavy drinkers. <laughs> okay. Oh, nuts. That's crazy. So we got about a minute left here before the news. I guess quickly, uh, how do you, if a listener is experiencing dizziness, how can you determine what practitioner to discuss their concerns with? So a, a primary care practitioner or a physical therapist who specializes in vestibular rehab is a good start, uh, especially if the patient has a history of the BPPV, you know, vestibular physical therapy is good. But if it's your first time, your primary care practitioner is good because they can just prescribe prednisone on the spot if, if it's a, a vestibular hypofunction or something like that. But uh, if there are any neurological symptoms like difficulty speaking, swallowing, uh, weakness on the one side, or confusion, blurred vision, you immediately would call an ambulance. Wow. Okay. It's the bottom of the hour time for the news. Thanks for listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital wants you to know we are here for you literally and virtually. For our patient's safety, Mercy is providing virtual doctor appointments from the comfort of your home. 
This service is available for Stat Care Urgent Care, seven days a week, and Mercy Primary Care, Monday through Friday. See our website at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth for office and appointment hours. Mercy Telehealth visits are simple, convenient, and can be utilized by anyone who has access to a smartphone, tablet, or computer. Our Mercy representatives are ready and happy to assist you. So whether you are in need of urgent care for minor illnesses and injuries or would like a one-on-one with a Mercy primary care physician, Mercy is here for you. Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital telehealth appointments. Learn more at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. That's cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. Online appointments are considered medical services and will be billed to your insurance. Copays and deductibles apply. Is CBD oil right for you? That may seem like a simple question, but the answers don't come from a convenience food store or a mall kiosk. Your medicine center pharmacist is the most accessible healthcare professional. Our pharmacists have been trained to provide expert CBD oil information to tailor therapies like CBD capsules, tinctures, lotions, and ointments to your particular need. We have the highest quality, organic, Colorado-grown, non-GMO, full-spectrum CBD oil products. Visit the medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia. It's time to get out of the house and take a class. Studio Arts and Glass offers, of course, stained glass classes, but much, much more. Fuse glass snowflakes or make a heart for your Valentine. Glass terrarium eggs or painted wine glasses. Gift shops open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6. Call for class times or studioartsandglass.com. Located on 77 in Apple Grove in North Canton. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. In these difficult times, please stay calm and make sure your medical and healthcare supplies are well stocked. Have Kleenex, pain relievers, fever reducers such as Tylenol and cough syrup like Robitussin, Dayquil, cough drops and maybe a humidifier. And make sure you take a good multivitamin like Linus Pauling Super Multivitamins. Also, you might get a good probiotic and make sure that you get plenty of rest and plenty of nutritious food. The Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. You're listening to Health Matters this morning with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and we are talking with Dr. Effie Berenstein from Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital, North Canton location. So, it's not uncommon to hear somebody say they lost their balance. Um, what's balance, and does it does it uh, how does it work? So, your balance is is made of three main systems: four if you count uh, the hearing. Uh, your vestibular system is what we were just talking about. So that kind of tells you where you are in space when you're moving. Your visual system, so your eyes tell you where the horizon is. And your your proprioceptive or, or your joint sense and muscle sense system. So they all kind of work together um, as a system of checks and balances. Uh, so one will kind of confirm with the other uh, to see whether or not the feedback that's coming in is is accurate. So, do the do the eyes are part of the indication that um, we've lost our balance, or are they a corrective? I mean, you look up and you look around a room, and the room's spinning. And do they help to correct that, or? So actually, the the, the reason that that you're you're seeing the room spinning is because there's a there's a miscommunication between uh, whether it's the brain or the inner ear and the eyes. Um, so let's say, for instance, with BPPV that we were talking about earlier, that benign paroxysmal vertigo, uh, that those crystals that give a signal on one ear that, let's say, your head is tilting back, the other ear doesn't have that signal. So the brain is trying to correct and move the eyes along uh, the plane of the canal that's, that's stimulated and try and cor- to try and keep the image that you see at verticals or, or at uh, an upright position. Hmm. So it's really, it's, it's your eyes, your eyes uh, adjust to kind of keep things centered and aligned with the horizon. If, if you look in the mirror and you kind of tilt your head a little bit, you can see your eyes rotate the opposite way 
because they try to keep an image still hmm. uh, on your retina. I equate this to an airplane to the to the one instrument in the airplane that keeps you on the. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, the pitch and the yaw. The, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, I, don't, I, I don't know the terms. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. All right. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. It, it seems common to feel unsteady when uh, walking in the dark. Um, I guess I've never really experienced that, but, but uh, why is that? Well, I, I, this is uh, something that uh, is really just taking – one of your three main systems of balance out of the equation. So if you're walking in total darkness um, and let's say you're, again, more seasoned in life, uh, you're relying now on only your inner ear, your vestibular system, and your joint sense to tell you kind of where you are. And if you have deficits in either of those, which is very common just as a natural degenerative process, this, the information that's getting feeded to your, that fed to your brain is not really great. So um, mm. it's, it, you feel unsteady because of that. Hmm. So does the average person, when they get up in the middle of the night and it's totally dark, do they have their eyes open or closed? <laughs> do we well, know this? I'm, I'm assuming they're having their eyes open because they're trying to get in as much visual feedback as, yeah, as sure. they can. Well, I, you know, I, with your closed eyes, you're going to fall over a chair or something like that. Yeah, I, I mean, especially... If you, yeah, especially if, you have any visual, if you have any visual, whatever. And, and I've, I've always read or heard that your sleeping room should be totally dark. And, and I don't know what the temperature in the room influences, you know, your dizziness or whatever. But, but I just heard that not too long ago that it should be totally dark. I think... I don't know that I like that, but whatever. So. Yeah, I, I mean, as long as you don't have any Lego lying around for a dog to trip over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. okay. Anyway. All right, so let's talk about uh, conditions or maybe even disease states patients might have. Is there anything that might make them more prone to being dizzy? Or maybe it's maybe it's more of a balance thing. And I want to just make a little note here. Um, when we as pharmacists do medication reviews with patients, it's unsettling how many people think it's okay to fall. Oh, I'm getting older. I just, you know, lose my balance more. Or, oh, I'm, I'm just getting older and, you know, I just, I fall a couple times a week. That is not good. So I just, if you could comment on what you see and then maybe we could just encourage people to make sure they talk to their provider because we don't want you getting hurt. Oh, yeah, definitely. No, that falling is bad. Falling is bad, whoever you are. Um, but in terms of in terms of conditions that can impact a person's balance, there's also a wide range. Anything from stroke um, to multiple sclerosis, uh, Parkinson's disease, even chronic low back pain um, hmm. can can alter the joint sense um, from your back and cause you to to have decreased balance. Um, visual impairments. So again, when people get older and they don't have that that visual system as a as a good source to tell them where horizon is, then uh, you're you're more prone to falling. Huh. Are there exercises you can focus focus on in physical therapy to help improve a patient's balance? Sure, yeah. And in order to improve balance, you have to lose your balance. It's it's just what it is because we have to train the brain to react, um, and we have to program that that motor response of the body to react to a loss of balance. So a lot of the exercises that I do with patients uh, involve just different functional situations and making them more and more challenging, like standing with your feet together or standing on one leg, which we do often, but we don't really realize that we do that throughout the day. Um, uh, standing with one foot in front of the other uh, or with walking and all of those can be uh, can can you be used to challenge the patient appropriately depending on their level of balance so as Brad said obviously aging is a is a sort of a pretty big issue with falls what do we do um, if an individual falls and hits her head uh, I mean we actually I actually had a neighbor not too long ago who 
is he fell, hit his head, and died uh, from the head injury. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, so that's, that's really unfortunate, um, especially when especially when an individual is older. Uh, it falls and hitting hitting the head. It, it's very very dangerous. Uh, if somebody falls and hits their head. It, they you monitor monitor the symptoms. If there's any confusion or neurological signs, like I mentioned before, like weakness or for instance, nausea, vomiting, or or loss of consciousness, then that's that's an emergency that needs to be uh, addressed. Um, but yeah, call call an ambulance. Well, it, I, it, I, if they're unconscious, for sure. Yeah, you know, but here the yeah. guy gets the guy gets up and he's I'm okay. Huh? <laughs> it, then in that case, you, you monitor the symptoms over the next few hours, sure. um, and if there's nothing that that really changes, if it's just if, if you've got a goose egg on the head and and nothing else, it's still probably a good idea to call your your medical provider to just let them know that you fell so that they can ask you the pertinent questions. Sure. So okay, what about concussions? And you know. Athletes are prone to that, and da da da. And the football players and all them other guys, you know. Yeah. What's the next move? The next move. Yeah. What, what What do we do if we suspect a concussion? I mean, what are the symptoms generally? Well, I mean, there's there's a wide variety, a wide range of symptoms that happen from a concussion, like uh, irritability, uh, poor poor ability to fall asleep, uh, dizziness, nausea, depending on the severity of of the concussion. Um, but those are all uh, things that can be treated. That can be treated. Uh, the, earlier, the the thought was let them rest, no stimulation, nothing. Uh, but new research is showing that an initial period of rest is is good um, without stimulation for about 24 to 48 hours. Um, sometimes up to like seven or 10 days, but that's just depending on how severe it was. Um, and then there's just a gradual reintroduction of stimulation to the brain and uh, physical activity. Okay, so I'm going to use a big term here. How about a subdural hematoma? Is this a, a something that can happen in this concussion it, circle? It certainly can, yeah, and that's, that's a problem. That is, a, that is an emergency room problem. Hmm. So how can physical therapy treat concussion systems? Um, so depending on, depending on which systems are involved, some people have just visual impairments. Some people have uh, impairments of the proprius of the joint senses, the sensors in the neck. Uh, some people have vestibular problems. You can actually get BPPV from having a concussion because the blow to the head can actually knock some of those crystals oh. off. So there's there's a wide variety of of, of uh, symptoms that can manifest. And in physical therapy, you just uh, we treat um, the impaired functions and we gradually progress the patient according to their tolerance okay our final break is here uh you're listening to health matters with the medicine center pharmacy you're listening to health matters with the medicine center pharmacy and your hosts pharmacists paul white and brad white remember you can get more information right now by visiting medshoprx.com that's m-e-d-s-h-o-p-r-x.com we'll be back with more of health matters with the medicine center pharmacy in just a moment Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you'll want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local Medicine Center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Saving money is awesome. Saving money on items you actually use? Fantastic. Hi, Paul White for the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville. If you think you'll find the same low prices, huge variety, or great customer service at any other store, you'd be wrong. Stop into our store in Louisville and see what great deals we have. Follow us on our Facebook page at Half Off Store to see super specials. Why pay full price? Come in and experience the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. In these difficult days, please stay calm and make sure your medical and healthcare supplies are well stocked. Make sure you have Kleenex, acetaminophen or Tylenol, ibuprofen or Advil, 
Mucinex, Robitussin, or Dayquil, cough drops, maybe even a humidifier or a vaporizer. You can also just turn the shower on hot and sit in the bathroom breathing in the steam. How about vitamin D and a probiotic? And a good multivitamin like Linus Pauling Super Multivitamins that you'll find only in the Medicine Center pharmacies. So take care of yourselves and don't stress about the coronavirus. Make sure you get plenty of rest and plenty of healthy food. The Medicine Center Pharmacy, Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Yes, we are open. We are open. The Medicine Center Pharmacies and the Half Off and Out By Store in Louisville are open. Some great services are still in play. Our drive through windows, curb service, and our enhanced delivery service. Our stores are fully inventoried and fully staffed for your convenience. 13 pharmacists to help you with your medications and over-the-counter products. So don't hesitate to visit us or use one of our services. Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, New Philadelphia, and Minerva. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. Welcome back to Health Matters. Um, We have one segment left to talk to the doctor about dizziness, vertigo, all kinds of stuff. So here we go. All right, doctor, let's talk about uh, for the listeners that we've intrigued to realize that dizziness is something they may not have to live with. What's the next step? When when do you reach out to your doctor and how do you do it? Like to come and get your services, do they need a referral or maybe you can cover all that in your explanation? So uh, physical therapy is a direct access profession in all 50 states in, in some way, shape or form. And that means that you can go off the street to uh, into a physical therapy clinic and, and get treatment. Um, insurance companies impose different guidelines and restrictions. Uh, Physical therapy is actually technically considered a a specialist rather than a general practitioner. Uh, So some insurances won't require a a referral for evaluation or treatment. Uh, Some require just uh, the uh, referring practitioner's signature uh, on the plan of care after the evaluation. Some won't even allow physical therapy evaluation without a primary care provider's mm-hmm. referral. So the best idea would be to call your insurance company and find out what their policy is regarding uh, physical therapy. Uh, Me- Medicare, for instance, you, you don't need a physician referral in Ohio for an evaluation, uh, but after the evaluation, we usually submit to, a, um, to the patient's primary care practitioner just to let them no, and then they'll sign off on a plan of care, and then we uh, we can treat the patient. But uh, if somebody is self-pay, for instance, you don't need um, a referral for evaluation or, or for treatment. Do all physical therapists treat dizziness, balance, and concussions? So not not all. Um, in in physical therapy school, we are we're all exposed to. Um, to vi- dizziness and balance and, and concussion treatment in, in some respect. But then after those, after graduation, people can specialize in certain oh, fields to get further education once they're in the clinic or, or even in, in PT school, they can get uh, further education on vestibular rehabilitation or concussions. So usually it's it's just select physical therapists that are, um, interested and, and specialize in vestibular uh, treatment. So how about this? Before we um, get along here any further, why don't you list your contact information for our listeners so that they can get more information from you and your practice and, and Cleveland Clinic and um, let's go to that and then we can come back with a couple other questions for you. Sure. Uh, uh, so the clinic's phone number here is uh, 330-966-8920. Uh, extension 2 would get you to the front desk, or extension 1 would get you to central scheduling uh, if you have uh, if you want to schedule an appointment. And uh, if, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me. Uh, my email is fe.berenstein at cantonmercy.org, and that's E-F-F-I-E dot B-E-R-E-N-S-H. T-E-Y-N at CantonMercy.org. I'd be glad to answer any questions, or at least try to. 
So I have something I just thought of based on, um, so let's say that I'm having this vestibular disorder mm -hmm. and you've determined, or my primary care physicians determined that physical therapy is the solution. Is this, um, can it be a, a one visit solution? Is it multiple visits? What, what can a patient expect? I, I guess I'm wondering on that front. So uh, unfortunately my best answer is it depends. Um, and I hated hearing that answer in physical therapy school, but I've realized that that's the answer to most questions. But I've had patients come in just one time. I've had patients that uh, it was a very clear cut, uh, simple case of BPPV. And after repositioning them, they felt mm -hmm. fine. And I usually schedule an appointment to follow up just to make sure that everything's okay. But I'll tell them if you're feeling fine over the next couple of days, you're okay. Because with something like BPPV, it really could take one time. I've also had the opposite where I've, I've had to have patients come in several times because it was just a persistent case um, of BPPV, where sometimes crystals can get stuck to those feather-like cupulae, and that, that's a little bit longer sometimes. Some time ago, there was a practice in Warren, Ohio. Um, Dr. Lippi was the primary physician. There was a second partner there and, and one of the things that they recommended for, for all sorts of ear issues was fluoride product called fluorogen and everybody who went to that practice came out of there with fluoride uh, it was a prescription I think at the time I can't remember this is a long time ago but he was considered the master in this area of you know reconnecting the, the hammer anvil and the stirrup you know like he replaced one of the bones that was deteriorated or whatever mm -hmm. but but in the in the course of thinking about this I remember the discussion about the semicircular canals in the ear what do they do so the the semicircular canals they're they're fluid filled and uh the fluid moves along they're they're angled in pretty much uh they cover pretty much all planes of movement that your head would, would go through. So there's a, there's an anterior canal, there's a posterior canal, and there's a horizontal canal. So if, it depends on which direction your head is actually moving. That will determine which of those canals get stimulated. And they work in a push-pull relationship on, uh, you know, on both sides. So um, input from one side has to match or be, con be directly opposite from the input from the other side. Um, and that's how we know, that's kind of our checks and balances, how we know where our head moves and accelerates. Do we think of them as like a gyroscope? or Kind of, yeah, sure. Yeah, you can think of them as a gyroscope, um, a fluid-filled gyroscope, yeah. yeah okay. that's, that's a fair uh, comparison, too. Okay. Um, what do we got left, Brad? A couple minutes. Um, well, Doc, do you have a... A, you know, some closing thoughts for listeners or any special uh, story you'd like to share as uh, a final message? Sure. I mean, some, cl some closing thoughts, I guess. Ver vertigo is a symptom, and it, it could be a symptom of one of several pathologies that can often be treated or even cured uh, by a physical therapist trained in vestibular rehab. Um, but on the other hand, dizziness and vertigo can be a sign of something more serious. So I would just encourage people to please make sure that you follow up with a healthcare professional if you're if you're feeling dizziness. Please don't try to look up YouTube videos on how to <laughs> reposition yourself because you can actually make make stuff worse and move move the debris into uh, other canals and that's that's a whole mess. Um, but at Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital, we've got physical therapists who who are skilled at vestibular rehabilitation and, and concussion rehabilitation, and, and we can really help uh, people suffering from many types of, of dizziness and, and balance issues. That's amazing. How about your contact uh, phone number one more time before we wrap up? Sure. It's 330-966-8920. Uh, and extension two will get you to the front desk. Extension one will get you to the main scheduling office. Okay. Good stuff. Thank you. Yeah, very interesting program and a good review and that sort of thing. And I still, I still can't believe the crystal thing. It just kind of boggles my mind. But mm -hmm. when you think of the complexity of the human body, that's one of the things that really is just kind of a mystery. It's, uh, it's pretty nuts. 
And just by, just by how new this all is, it just goes to show how much we all still have to learn um, and how much we all still don't know about how complex and how... How did, how did this guy in Vietnam come up with this thing? And I, it, I'm actually not sure. I think, I think he, had a, he just had a patient where that would get dizzy with positional changes, and he couldn't explain it. Well, I can't. I can't believe the medical technology in Vietnam in 1928 or whatever that was. It was very yeah, I think it was, 20, I think it was 21. But <laughs> very, very advanced. It's kind of scary because it's like it's almost like the lobotomy of of vestibular <laughs> canals where they used to just chop the nerve or destroy the nerve. Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> wow. Okay, Dr. Effie Berenstein, thank you very much for coming to the, to our show today. We really enjoyed listening to you. And uh, Effie is a doctor of physical therapy with the Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital. I'd like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your health provider. Thanks to our sponsors, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Medicals, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital and City Arts and Glass, and, of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. As always, we thank you, listeners, for coming to Health Matters with the Medicine Center for Our Insane. Have a healthy week, and we'll see you right here again next Friday on News Talk 1480 WHBC. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. We'd like to remind our listeners that our program is available on our podcast. Use your favorite podcast app and go to the App Store and look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. And we'd appreciate if you'd subscribe.